Jesus. Endless love and beauty, endless worth. For well, nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Oh, yes, in your
I see you face to face. Cause nothing in this world will satisfy. Cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Lift it up in this room. The nothing in this world will satisfy. Oh, yes. It's Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Hallelujah. It's Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, we love your presence, Jesus. Hallelujah, we praise you in this place. There is no shadow that is a Yeah. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 8, it says, That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. You will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Lord, I thank you tonight for giving us this great gift of salvation. And I pray, God, that you would anoint our hands, that we would open up this word of God like a present that has been wrapped in your blood, almighty God. We thank you, Lord, for your desire to come and save us, to rescue us from the sins in our life, Jesus. And tonight, Lord, we will remember all the things that you have done for us, God, as we gather together in this place to glorify your name, Lord. It is your presence that we seek. We desire a relationship with you. Where the word says where two or three are gathered, there you are, Lord. We pray tonight, Jesus, that you would walk among us, minister to us, Lord, speak to us, our hearts, our minds, our spirit. Do whatever, Lord, needs to be done in our life as we walk with you, Lord, and as we come into your house in Jesus' name. You may be seated for a moment. Amen. The greatest gift is Jesus. What if I gave you a gift, amen, and year after year I came to your house and visited you, <clears throat> and there the gift sat on your table year after year, never being opened, amen. How would you think that would make a person feel, perhaps knowing that they had, amen, sacrificed to buy you a gift. This Christmas, don't forget about the greatest gift, amen, Jesus. How he was wrapped up for us, for the shepherds all that night to go and to see a sign that would be given to them, amen, this great and wonderful gift that it, even the heavens and earth were moved to come and express their gratitude that this great day of hope was coming to you and I, amen, this great gift that we would know as the man Christ Jesus. To the Jews, he is Yeshua, amen. To some, he is Adonai, he is the great God Almighty, amen. The greatest gift that you and I could ever receive, that this relationship that the Lord drap, draws us to, amen, wrapped up in Jesus is the word of truth, including all the promises and blessings found in the word of God. Amen. He is, in him dwells all the fullness, the Bible says, of the Godhead bodily. Amen. God saves. That's what his name, Jesus, Yeshua, means. It means God has become our salvation. And what a beautiful revelation that we receive when we take upon ourselves the reality and the name of Jesus. Amen. Take the gift of peace this Christmas and exchange it for the gift, amen, hallelujah, of your poverty spiritually, amen. Take God's gift, amen, and replace your guilt and your shame with forgiveness and love, amen. He can replace your worries and your anxieties with confidence and trust. He can replace your depression with fresh anointing and vision, amen. God can replace your guilt and your shame. 
He can replace these things, amen, that the world cannot replace, that year after year many Christians deal with. He can replace depression, amen, and give you fresh anointing and hope. He can exchange your, amen, emptiness with meaning and with purpose. God can give you this great gift if you would extend your hand and just accept it and unwrap it, amen, and place it in your heart. The greatest gift is Jesus, amen. Jesus, hallelujah, declares those who are living with confusion, Jesus can exchange that confusion with clarity. It doesn't matter what religious background that a person may come from. Jesus didn't come to earth to bring religion, amen. He came to bring relationship by giving us the greatest gift, amen. He extends his hand of mercy from heaven, pulling us towards him every day that you and I desire to know him, amen. The greatest gift is the freedom of salvation, the freedom from sin. He came to make a relationship with you and I possible, why, without the blood, the atonement of Christ, you and I could not be in this personal relationship with God. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming, Lord Jesus, to the earth to show us true love. You came in the form of our brokenness. You came in the form of our shamefulness. That true love, the greatest gift, desires to be opened by your hands this beautiful night. Amen. And it's not enough for our hands to open that gift, but our heart must be open to receive that gift. Amen. Why don't you stand with me tonight as we pray? Amen. And allow this young man to come to share his heart tonight with us, what God has placed in his heart. Remember, as you gather with your family, amen, this holiday season, as we step into the new year, amen, don't forget the greatest gift that we have is the gift of salvation that Jesus offers us. So if you open up some presents and you don't get what you want, amen, remember Jesus, amen. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. Put a smile on your face and say, you know what? I already got everything that I need, amen. Hallelujah. Let's invite Brother Matthias tonight to come and minister to us. Tell him, Brother Matthias, preach to us tonight, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, church. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here, amen, on a Friday night, amen, where basketball games are going on. People are playing sports and all types of things. Clubs are open, bars open till midnight, but you chose to be here, amen. So we thank you. <laughs> I want to thank my pastor for giving me this opportunity to speak some things that the Lord has placed upon my heart, amen, and I want to, of course, thank you, like I said, for being here, amen. I want to open up with the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verse 1, the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, sorry, verse 1, <laughs> it says, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom, and applying thy heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lifted up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. Amen. I want to speak tonight on this subject. Fear him. Amen. Fear him. I wonder if y'all could join me in prayer. Amen. Tonight. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would anoint my lips, Lord Jesus. Allow me to speak your word, Lord Jesus. Allow me to speak, Lord God, the words that you have placed upon my heart, Lord Jesus. Be with me tonight, Lord God, as I speak, Lord Jesus. Let your words come out, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Anoint, Lord God, me, Lord Jesus. Use this word, Lord God, to save souls, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. 
I pray all these things, Lord God. I pray all these things, Lord Jesus, in your wonderful name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Fear him. Amen. The fear of the Lord is one of the most important things we can obtain on this earth. Amen. It seems as though a lot of today's generation has either forgotten about the fear of the Lord or has neglected it. Amen. I would like to share with you a quote from a German philosopher named Friedrich Nietzsche, a sophist that many of today's generational thinkers hold dear. Amen. It says this. It says, whither is God? I will tell you, we have killed him, you and I. All of us are his murderers. But how did we do this? How could we drink up the sea? Who gave us the sponge to wipe away the entire horizon? What were we doing when we unchained this earth from its sun? Whither is it moving now? Whither are we moving? Away from all suns? Are we not plunging continually? Backward, sideward, forward, in all directions? Is there still any up or down? Are we not straying as though an infinite nothing? Do we feel the breath of empty space? Has it not become colder? Is it not night? Is not night continually closing in on us? Do we not need to light lanterns in the morning? Do we hear nothing as yet of the noise of the grave diggers who are burying God? Do we smell nothing as yet of the divine decomposition? God's too decompose. Yes, God is dead. God remains dead, and we have killed him. Hmm. Amen. It hurts me to admit that many of today's generational thinkers are being influenced by this man. Amen. It it shames me that our generation has strayed so far off from God's plan. Amen. 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 Our society has a as a whole has merged onto a completely different highway than God intended. And the saddest part is we have no steering wheel. Amen. We must regain our fear of the Lord. If we could go to Ecclesiastes Chapter 12, verse 13 through 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 through 14. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. All through the book of Ecclesiastes, pastor was just preaching on it the other day. The, the writer always alludes back to vanities of vanities. All things are vanity. Amen. He was saying that everything in this world that we think we should accomplish as humans is meaningless. Amen. Everything we think we should accomplish is useless when it comes to the things of God. Amen. And at the end of the whole entire um, book and his conclusion, he said, let us hear this conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Amen. He said, he said, after all of the things he could have written in this book, the final thing we should do, the only thing that matters is that we should fear God and keep his commandments. Amen. He also reminds us in verse 14 that God will judge us for everything we say, everything we do, and everything we think, amen, to fear God is to keep his commandments, amen, amen. If we could go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, amen, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction, amen, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, it says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. Amen. The beginning of knowledge, amen, is the reverence, respect, and awe for God and his word. Amen. Did you know that your fear for the Lord could attract God's very presence? 
Did you know that if God acknowledged your fear, that he would be drawn towards you? Amen. Let's go to Job chapter one, verse one. Amen. Job chapter one, verse one. It says there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. Amen. Whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Amen. One that feared God and eschewed evil. Amen. Can I tell you tonight that the first step to perfection in our human in our human life is the fear of God? Amen. The fear of God is what draws God close to us. Amen. He even says it again. God himself says it in chapter two, verse three of Job. Amen. Chapter two, verse three of Job. It says, and the Lord said unto Satan, amen. And the Lord said, has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause, amen. The fear of God would allow you, even though God is tempting you or God is testing your faith to draw you closer to him, the fear of God will allow you to stay faithful to him, amen? The fear of God will not allow you to slip on your faithful walk, but it will allow you to stay faithful, amen? Amen. There are two things you need to see here, amen? First, God acknowledged Job's fear, amen? God recognized that the fear that Job had for God was a big part of who Job was as a person, amen? Second, God called Job perfect. Amen. God called Job perfect. Job had obtained perfection in the Lord's eyes. Amen. Not in man's eyes, but more importantly, in God's eyes. I believe God gives us a clear picture and description of what a perfect human in God's eyes is. Amen. And that is a man that fears God and eschews evil. Amen. The fear of God is the first step into perfection. Amen. Let us go into Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. It says, there is a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God. Amen. The fear that Cornelius had for God had... um directed God's attention to him, amen, and his household, amen. Let's keep going. In verse 3, it says, He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms to the people, amen, which gave much alms to the people, amen. And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send them to Joppa and call for one, Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, amen, uh, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou ought to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Amen. Cornelius' fear of God caused Jesus, caused God's spirit to go to him and speak to him. Amen. It was through his fear that God gained access to his life. Amen. To his very being. Amen. If we go to verse 19, it says, when Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, behold, Three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee, into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them 
and certain brethren Joppa accompanied him. Amen. Could I tell you tonight that through the fear of God, that very thing could be the reason why a man of God is sent into your life. Amen. And through the fear of God, the fear of God won't allow you to just keep the man of God where he is in the church, but it'll cause you to bring him back to your house. Amen. To bring the words that God has poured into him back into your house. Amen. To affect the very way that you live. Amen. If we go to verse 34 after. So the men came to Peter and convinced him to come back. Amen. They told him that the vision that the Lord had showed him was for him to go back into the house of amen. Into the house of Cornelius. Amen. And so in verse 34, it says, then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth. I perceive that God is no respecter of person, but in every nation. He that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Amen. And if we go to verse 44, some of you ought to be excited in this house. Amen. It says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man for, forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then Peter, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Amen. The fear of God allowed Cornelius to have favor in God's sight. To the point where God came, sent his man, sent his messenger to Cornelius' house and allowed his whole family to be saved. Amen. Allowed his whole family to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. It was the fear of God and Cornelius' prayer life that allowed these things to happen. Amen. Amen. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. It says, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and they that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Amen. It's your fear of the Lord that will cause God to remember your name. Amen. The Bible says that he wrote a book of remembrance. Amen. The Lord wrote, writes a book of remembrance when you show that you truly fear him. Amen. When you show that you obey his every commandment. Amen. Amen. But what I've come here to do tonight is not to show you what you're missing out on but to show those without the fear of God what is coming your way. Amen. I have not come here to scare you, but to admonish you or warn you. Amen. The Bible records many instances of life without the fear of God. In Jeremiah chapter 5, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 7. Amen. The Bible says, How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me. And sworn by them that are no gods, when I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. They were as fed horses in the morning, every one neighed after his neighbor's wife. Shall I not visit these things, saith the Lord, and shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Go ye up upon her walls and destroy but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. Amen. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword nor famine. Amen. This is the time that Israel as a whole nation had lost the fear of the Lord. Amen. As I was reading this book of Jeremiah, I had no choice but to weep for what God was revealing to me. Amen. 
it was showing me, Lord, mm, it was showing me that maybe this book wasn't talking, well, it really wasn't. It wasn't talking about souls that weren't saved, but it was talking about the people that should have already been saved, amen. It was talking about the people that have been saved, but still had lost the fear of the Lord, amen. Amen. I believe a lot of Christians in this generation have lost the fear of God, amen. Amen. The Lord is describing his anger and disappointment with his own people because they have lost the fear of God in the book of Jeremiah. If we go to chapter 6, verse 11, it says, Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others within, with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, where there is no peace. Amen. Were they ashamed where they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. The people of Israel blatantly told God that they had no fear for him. Amen. They were not fearful of the power of God. Amen. They had no fear, no reverence, and they turned away from God's voice. Amen. God was speaking to them, crying out to them, calling them to come back to him, to turn away from their evil ways. But they did not listen. Amen. God gives us chance after chance to stop our evil ways. Yet we keep living in sin. Amen. You know what is right, yet you deliberately disobey his commands. Today's age of churches has lost reverence for God. Amen. God doesn't desire for song services to be planned, but he desires for prayer services to be planned. Amen. God doesn't want you to plan music only services. He wants you to plan prayer only services. Amen. We are beginning to lose all respect for God's house and his preacher. And we must stop now. Before it's too late, we must stop now. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 8. It says, Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye still murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after one and walk after other gods whom ye know not and come and stand before me in this house? which is called by my name, and say we are delivered to do all these abominations? Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Amen. Do you think God died on the cross for our sins so we could sin more? Amen. I understand we are all made of flesh, but there has to be some point in our walk with God where we are truly led by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. When you went under the water, your flesh died. Amen. And some of us don't act like it. Amen. The Bible says for every temptation, there is a way of escape. Temptations are supposed to strengthen your faith. I mean, your faith, not tear it down. Amen. Amen. I know this sounds rough, but I become angry when I see love and mercy being abused. Amen. Jeremiah chapter seven, verse 18. It says the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the woman knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beasts. And upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Amen. 
Amen. As Christians, our priorities have become misaligned, amen, with God's will. Time is our most valuable and rare resource on this earth. We freely give to our pagan gods, but when, but when God requires 30 minutes of prayer, it is hard for us to give. We struggle to just give 30 minutes out of the 24 hours God has gifted us with, amen? But we freely give hours and hours to sports and school and work and social media and video games, amen? At the end of the day, we're all going to do what we want, but don't expect things to change when you are unwilling to, amen? Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 20, it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my anger and my fury be poured upon the place, upon men and upon beasts and upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imaginations of their evil hearts, and went backward and not forward. Amen. Amen. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all the servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. They shall also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. Amen. God wakes us up at 4 o'clock in the morning, amen, not because he wants us to go back to sleep, amen, but he wants us to cry out and seek his face, amen. God doesn't allow you to fall asleep. Why? Because he wants you to go and pray, amen. Jeremiah chapter 15, amen. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 6. It says, thou hast forsaken me, saith the Lord. Thou art gone backward. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with repenting. Mm. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. Their widows are increased to me above the sands of the sea. I have brought upon them against the mother of the young men a spoiler at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly and terrors upon the city. She that hath borne seven languisheth. She hath given up the ghost. Her son is gone down while it was yet day. She hath been ashamed and confounded. And the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before their enemies, saith the Lord. The Lord is tired of his people not reverencing him. Amen. The Lord is tired of us not having the fear of God in our lives. Amen. We are called to be holy, set apart, but we have been acting like the world. Amen. I wonder if we could all stand tonight. Amen. If we could go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 23. It says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Amen. I wonder if that could be our prayer tonight, that the Lord would allow us to be corrected. Amen. Through his love. Amen. I wonder if we could cry out tonight for our friends that do not have the fear of God. Amen. Or have never heard of the fear of God. Amen. I wonder if we could cry out tonight for our families that have not the fear of God. Amen wonder if we could all lift our hands and pray tonight. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you, Lord God, would give us your fear, Lord Jesus. Allow us to reverence your word, God. Allow us to reverence your name, Lord Jesus. Forgive us, God, for taking your word for granted, Lord Jesus. Forgive us, God, for taking your mercy for granted, Lord Jesus. But allow us, Lord God, to live, Lord Jesus, faithfully to you, God. 
Allow us, Lord Jesus, to live wholeheartedly for you, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, for our family members, Lord God, that need you in their lives, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that they would allow, Lord God, themselves to seek your face, Lord Jesus. We pray, God, that you would pour out your spirit in these last days, Lord God. We pray, God, that you would turn our eyes back to you, Lord Jesus. Allow us to seek your face daily, Lord God. Allow us to walk with you faithfully, Lord Jesus. Don't allow us, Lord God, to be weary, Lord Jesus, to become weary, Lord God, in our walk with you, Lord Jesus. But let us walk with you daily, Lord God. We pray, Jesus, for our friends, God, that are struggling, Lord Jesus, to just live throughout the days, God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that your spirit would fall upon them, Lord God. We pray, Jesus, that you would use us, God, to minister into their lives, God. That you would use us, Lord Jesus, to speak into their lives, God. Give us the words to speak, Lord Jesus, that they may, Lord God, be persuaded, Lord Jesus, to come, Lord God, to your house and hear your word, God. That they would be persuaded, Lord Jesus, to have a walk with you, Lord Jesus. We cry out to you, Lord Jesus, for our families, God, for our friends, Jesus, for, Lord God, our church members, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that the fear, Lord Jesus, will once again live in our hearts, God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we would obey your commandments, Lord Jesus, that we would not, Lord God, live for you, Lord Jesus, to face, Lord God, but that we may, Lord Jesus, live for you, Lord God, wholeheartedly, Lord Jesus. We pray all these things, Lord God, in your wonderful name, Lord Jesus. We pray all these things, God, in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen, Lord God. Amen, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a strong hand clap tonight. <laughs> strong words from a young man. But I believe his heart is burdened with the things of God. Amen. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 14, verse 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on earth, and to every nation and every kindred and every tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God. Give glory unto him, for the hour of his judgment is come. Worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. God commands us that we reverence him, that we fear him. Amen. Walk before him humbly knowing that he has the power to give and to take life. Lord Jesus, never let me lose that fear, God. When I think about my life, I compare it, Lord, begin to study history itself and all these great men and women of God who have given their life, their whole life to you. Some have taken vows of poverty, making an oath between them and God, swearing to always live poor, to be poor, to suffer among the impoverished people that they may walk with God uprightly. Lord, I know that they're are diamonds among men, Jesus, that desire to live for you that way. But as I look through history, God, it's those type of men that you chose to use and show miracles through. It was humble hearts, broken men that desired nothing in this world only to please and serve God. When I think about my holiness, Lord, or what I think it is, I truly know, God, I must trust you more than ever. If I try to live for you, Lord, according to my own understanding, I may fall short. But, Lord, if you're leading me, if you're guiding me, if I know it's your voice that has brought me, Lord, to this place, that leads me to broken hearts, people that are in need, God, it's you, Lord, I must confess for my flesh desires to do other things, Lord, but the Spirit in me beckons me, God. It calls me to your house. It calls me to people, Lord, who need to hear your voice. It causes me to rise up, Lord, and begin to pray 
and seek your face on behalf of others. It causes me, Lord, to wipe and clean a place at my table, Lord, and to share a meal with others, God. It causes me, Lord, to speak about you, Lord, when others choose not to. That's my relationship with you, Lord. I vow, Lord, before you to speak your name, God. That your name, Lord, would always be mentioned upon my lips daily, almighty God. Thanking you, Lord, for all that you have done. All that you are doing, Lord, and are going to do. I thank you, Lord, for the gift and blessing me and my family, Lord, with another grandbaby, Lord Jesus. Behind all, Lord, that I may go through my, my family, the church, together collectively as a body. In the end, God, you have all the praise and, and worship, God, of my heart. I will not allow anything, God, or anyone, Lord, to steal the joy, Lord, and the happiness that I find when I am with you, Lord. This house, this church that you have placed in my hands to lead your people, Lord, I thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Begin to cleanse our heart, God, going into this new year, Lord. Remove, God, the spirit, Lord. That is, Lord, attacking the brethren, God. Help them see, God, that Love is greater than all these things. I don't want to count your people, Lord, because they belong to you. God said in the book of Exodus chapter 30, he told Moses, don't count the people. And if you do, bring an atonement for, the, for every person. God doesn't like it when we count people because people belong to him. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 24, David begins to count the people. God sends a plague upon them for that. It's not about numbers, church. But it is about obedience to the Lord. God doesn't want us to count who he desires to save. That's not what this is about. And I would pray for those brothers who have been caught up in this trap and the other brothers who are being offended by it. I pray for them, Lord, tonight that we would meet you on your ground and not our own. That we would see, God, what you want us to see and not what we choose to see. That you would give us a heart, God, that is willing and desiring for change. Not only, Lord, in the ministry, but among the ministers, almighty God. Baptize us with kindness and with love, Lord, and fellowship. Help each other see more than ever, God, that we need each other as brothers in Christ. That we are the body collectively, God. Together, we are one. I thank you, Jesus, for all that you are doing. In the name of Jesus. Remember, be blessed, don't be stressed, amen. Let God take care of the rest, and he truly will. If you have time this Sunday night, Brother Daly will be throwing a, a revival service there, a little party, amen, if you would like to go. They're going to have a bonfire afterwards. I encourage you, if you ain't got nothing to do on Sunday night, go hang out with Brother Daly and his church, amen. They're going to have an awesome preacher there. We're excited, amen, about this new year that's coming. And so some things already are unfolding, planning.